Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. <clears throat> Hi everybody, welcome back for some more Dirac notation. Today we're going to talk about projection operators and the spectral theorem. <clears throat> so this is the last bit of chapter one. So V is going to be our complex inner product space, linear space, complex inner product vector space. And maybe you have seen the definition of, of, of a projection operator. So it's a linear operator that maps V into V that has the property that P acting on itself twice, or P squared, is equal to P. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is build such projection operators out of Dirac operators, Brockett pairs. So let's do that by looking at it, an example. And it's going to turn out that these will be self-adjoint projection operators. And again, with the, last ex with the last example I looked at in the previous lecture, that's going to be essentially obvious. So, as I said, let's, as I've said several times in these lectures, let's start off with the simplest possible case, two dimensions, and for us that'll be C2. So let E1, E2, caddy one caddy 2 be an orthonormal basis of C2. And let's consider the projection operator defined in this way. Caddy one bra E1, the same indices, caddy one bra E1. Now, how do I know that's a projection operator? I'll get around to that. I need to show that p squared equals p. But let's look at its action on vectors. So let's take an arbitrary vector in C2. An arbitrary vector can be written as a linear combination of the basis vectors. And let's let p act on that arbitrary vector. And so we have the projection operator on the left acting on it. And this is an orthonormal basis. And we're just left with the part of it, or the component, the, the part in the E1 direction. That kind of makes sense because it's built out of the E1 bras and kets. Well, it makes sense because that's what they do in this case, these types of projection operators. Okay. Now we need to verify that it is actually is indeed a projection operator. And we just do this little calculation. And, that, and we see that p squared equals p. Okay. And we can easily verify that p is equal to its adjoint. So it's a self-adjoint operator. Now this type of construction can be generalized to n dimensions. So in dimensions for us is going to be Cn. An orthonormal basis will be ket E1 through ket En. And let's take an operator defined as the Brockett pairs of the first D Brockett pair, the sum of the first D Brockett pairs. Okay. And that is a self-adjoint projection operator. Verify that. Self-adjoint should be easy, but just show that it's a projection operator. And that will give you a little bit of practice manipulating um, the Brockett combinations. Okay, let's look at another example. Go back to C2. Sorry, yeah, C3 in this case, because we're going to do something a little bit different. Okay, C3, and we have... Um, Orthonormal basis, ket E1, ket E2, ket E3. Let's make a projection operator that is just ket E1 bra E1, ket E2 bra E2. Okay, verify that it is P squared equals P, and you can see pretty easily that it is its own adjoint. Okay, let's pick an arbitrary operator in C3, sorry, arbitrary vector in C3. And let's let P act on it. Now you should be able to guess what it does based on 
a little example we did in C2 earlier, it's going to project out, project it onto the E1, E2 subspace. And that's exactly what happens here. So P acting on this vector is equal to A cat E1 plus B cat E2. And as I said, this is fairly easy to verify, and I urge you to do that. All right, now, there's a very important identity that we're going to use over and over, and, that, and it's the following. Let's consider Cn, and let, let's consider the usual notation for orthonormal basis on Cn. Okay, ket one through ket n. Now we're going to form, there's an n, we're going to sum from 1 to n. In the previous example, it was sum from 1 to d, or two examples back. We're going to look at uh, ket ei bra ei, sum from all over the entire space, i equal 1 to n. And that is going to be equal to the identity map. The identity is denoted here with this blackboard 1. Okay. So, how do I know it's the identity? Well, I take this and I let it act on an arbitrary vector in Cn. And that's the most general vector you can in Cn, a, a linear combination of all possible basis elements. So, we do this calculation, and this is a very good calculation to do to, to get your indices straight, your Kronecker deltas, but doing this calculation, you end up just with ket psi. So, that it is the identity map. Again, I went through this really quickly. Look at the calculations involved in this, and if there's any questions, ask me about them, because this is an important concept here, the identity map in Brockett notation. Okay, so I want to end with a statement of the spectral theorem for finite dimensional self-adjoint operators I didn't see on, didn't say on a complex inner product space, but that's always going to be the case for us here. Actually, I did say that in the next line. Sorry about that. I didn't say it in that line. So let A map V into V be a self adjoint linear operator on a finite dimensional complex inner product space. Okay. Then we have the two really fundamental pro properties for self-adjoint operators. Now we're doing this in finite dimensions. I'll say, a comp I'll, I'll say a couple of words about that. But A has real eigenvalues and the eigenvectors corresponding to distinct or different eigenvalues are orthogonal and therefore we can always make them orthonormal. And then the next statement is that is um, I need to say a few more words about it. The eigenvectors of A span V. So the eigenvectors of A are a basis for V. In other words, sometimes it said there's a complete set of eigenvectors. Now this is important because it, it doesn't it doesn't matter whether we have repeated eigenvalues or not. What I mean by that, uh, consider a two by two matrix and have, so both eigenvalues are four, let's say. How many eigenvectors do we have? Unless we know something about the structure of the matrix, we can't say. Could have two, could have one. But if the, if the operator is self-adjoint, it always has a complete set of eigenvectors. That is, eigenvectors, the number of eigenvectors equal to the, the number that's the dimension of the space. Okay, in infinite dimensions, spectral theory is a big subject. Similar type of results can, can occur, but also much more complicated results. And that's why we're, we're just focusing on the finite dimensional case at the moment. All right, now, I give a proof of these results in, in uh, 
in, uh, in, in the book. Um, you can have a look at this in the, in the, the second part, the, the fact that the, the eigenvectors of A span B, if it's self-adjoint. Um, if you have n eigenvectors, that's a pretty easy proof. The problem comes when you, you have repeated eigenvalues and you don't have enough eigenvectors immediately. What do you do? How do you get the extra ones? And you can do that, but it's a little involved algebraically. So I'm not going to examine you on that or the proof or have you go through that in any way. But if you don't want to, the previous part, you do need to know the proofs and how to how why these are true. And the calculations are pretty straightforward. They use the properties of the inner products and to 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 conclude that the eigenvalues are real and that the eigenvectors correspond to distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal to each other. And we can normalize them and make them orthonormal. This, I'm going to ask you to go through this yourself. I've asked these on exams several times as problems on exams. But I think the calculations are quite straightforward. And if you have any trouble with them at all, we will discuss on which line of the calculation that I outline here you had difficulties with. Okay, that's it for today, and that's it for Chapter 1. Next time we start on Chapter 2, Dynamics of the Quantum Particle, and that's going to be all about the Schrodinger equation. It's going to be a little bit different, but these concepts are going to, are going to resurface in a slightly different way, and that's going to be interesting. So until next time, bye.